Welcome to another Fast Tech video. In this one, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to disassemble a PS2. We're gonna be disassembling an old school first gen PS2. And we sell all parts for PS2s on our website. So if you have a bad disc drive or a bad power supply, check the links in the description box and the top comment. You're also gonna be needing our Fast Tech Pro Auto Kit, which is gonna save you a lot of time disassembling your PS2 or any other electronic device from your PlayStation to your Xbox, to Apple iPhones, to MacBooks, and everything in between. Links in the description box, and you can use the coupon code YouTube for a discount. Let's get started. So we got a hard drive attachment on it. This was an add-on, and of course the memory card that you're probably familiar with. So we're gonna remove the memory card, and then we're gonna remove the hard drive at the back. Most PS2s that you will find on the, on the used market would not have these. This is still a very rare item to find on a PS2. There's two screws that hold it in. They're flat heads. We're gonna grab our Fastech Pro Auto Kit. And links are in the description box in the top comment for this. I'm gonna remove these two screws. At this point, we should be able to pull out the cover and that's the hard drive in there. A lot of people use these hard drive attachments to run homebrew and copied games. This is a Seagate hard drive. That's what the slot looks like on the inside. Normally there'd be a cover here on most systems that you're gonna have to remove. Now we're gonna look at the back. We're gonna grab our pry tool from our Fast Tech Pro Toolkit. There's some covers that we have to remove that hide screws underneath. One more here. One of the screws is missing. There's a screw that's supposed to be in here. Now we're gonna need a Phillips bit from our Fast Tech Pro Auto Kit. And now we're gonna get these screws out. So already a lot of dirt coming out of this system. This PS2 has seen better days. Now at this point, we're gonna lift up the case.
Oh, so this is a late model PS2 where the power button and the eject assembly is attached to the system itself on previous PS2 models, the ones that I've seen online anyways, they have the power button assembly attached to the case at the front and there's a cable running and you should be careful not to break that cable, but this system does not have that. Now we're gonna remove the controller ports and the memory card slots. It's just gonna lift out. There's a cable running underneath. We're gonna unclip the cable. There's a clip on it. I'm gonna lift up the clip and remove the cable. This is really dirty. We're gonna have to clean that up later. Now I'm gonna remove this, the, the motherboard and the disk drive assembly and everything else, along with the power supply assembly out of the case. There's a lot of uh, dust bunnies in there. Case is really filthy as well. We're gonna clean that out. If you're having powering issues, it could be a power supply issue, but in some cases, it, this, it could be a blown fuse, which is this component right here. And the first thing you wanna do is visually inspect this fuse. You can see on this fuse that there's a little cable running in between. And if that wire is broken, that means that fuse needs to be replaced. And we do sell these fuses on our website. I'll put a link in the description box. If the fuse is intact and the power supply is still not giving out any amps and the PS2 is not powering on, you need to replace the power supply, which is this component right here. There's a cable that we have to remove. There's a clip on it. We're gonna have to push it down. And there's some screws that hold it in. You don't want to touch any of these components, especially if your system was on in the last hour, because some of these components will still hold the charge even after the system's been turned off. We sell the power supply on our website as well at fasttechstore.com. Links are gonna be in the top comment and the description box as well. Now that we've got the cable removed, we can lift up the power supply. There's pins underneath. There's four pins that hold it in. And that's the power supply module right there. We do sell this on our website. The part number for this power supply is 1468. 756-11 and as I mentioned earlier the first thing you want to do before you order a power supply is check this fuse if that wire running in between is broken or not visible then you need to replace this fuse and this fuse comes out quite easily it's a user replaceable part all you have to do is pop it out um, you can use a pry tool such as the one in our kit and simply lift it out like this very easily replaced and then you can replace the fuse first thing you want to do is check the wire if the wire is broken in between if there if this wire is not visible then you need to replace this fuse but this fuse looks like it's good so we're gonna put it back in place so that's the most common thing that fails in these and the second most common thing is the disk drive, which is what we're gonna remove next. That's the carriage for the expansion slot. It looks like it fell out. The second item that fails the most is the disk drive. So we're gonna remove that next, but to get to that, we have to remove the fan and the AC input inlet. We're gonna remove the screws that are holding the fan down lots of times this fan fails as well and if, if your system's like shutting off after 
few minutes of play, you need to check to see if the fan's spinning. If it's not spinning, which is which you can easily check by looking at the back, then you need to replace this fan. We're gonna flip it back over. We have to remove this plastic cover or shielding, and we have to remove the connector for the fan. There's a two pin power connector and there's tape that's holding it down. We're gonna to wiggle slowly and pull it out like that. It's a very thin connector and it's gonna be easy to break. So take your time with this step. And this is a critical component because your, your system's not gonna work without that fan. I promise you. Once you have that cable out, now the fan's just gonna fall out at this point. And that's the fan right there. As you can see, it's filthy and it needs to be cleaned out. Next, we're gonna remove the AC inlet. There's another screw on this side here. I'm gonna lift it up. It's gonna come off like that. That's the AC inlet and the cover for the fan. Now we can remove the disc drive and it's being held in by this piece here. We're gonna put our pry tool, lift it up. There's two of them, one on each side and then there's one at the front, but that one got released on its own. All you have to do is pry it off like this. I'll demonstrate it for you guys. It's gonna be in like this and then you, and then the front is gonna come off. And then there's cables for the disc drive that are running underneath. So we wanna be very careful here not to damage those cables. There's one on the side here. We can just lift it out like that. And these ones also pull out. And then there's one cable running in the middle for the laser. There's a clip that I'm gonna have to lift up. I know it's hard for you guys to see. There's a clip that I have to pull back. I will demonstrate to you how that works in just a second. So the disk drive, I know you guys couldn't see, but there's a clip that we have to pull back like this from the sides. This piece here, this piece here. And when we're reinstalling this thing, we're just gonna push it down from the sides just like it goes up, push it down and then push it down once you have the cable. And that's how that goes. And now we're down to the main board assembly. There's some screws that hold it in. Also Phillips, but we need a smaller Phillips this time around, like a size one or a size zero. And all these bits are available in our Fast Tech Pro Auto Kit or our Fast Tech Pro Tool Kit. It saves you a lot of time as you can see here. There's lots of screws in these devices and doing them all manually will take a lot longer to make these videos. I'll tell you that these videos would be two, three hours each. If it wasn't for the Fast Tech Pro Auto Kit, you can use the coupon code YouTube for a discount and links are gonna be in the description box and the top comment as always.
Now we're gonna flip it over on the other side. There's another screw that has to come out. It's a larger Phillips screw. Two more Phillips small screws on this side here. And now we should be able to separate this plate from the main board. And that's separated, a lot, lot more dust bunnies in here. And now we're down to the motherboard. We still have the heat sink and a back plate attached to it. So I'm gonna separate that as well. Sticking on, I would imagine, due to old thermal paste. Oh, there you go. Ah, huh, what do you know? It doesn't even have thermal paste. It's got thermal pads, which is interesting. I didn't know that about the PS2. And like I said, it is my first time disassembling one of these. So make sure to drop a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't already for a lot more disassembly and repair videos. And this is the PS2's motherboard. And that's the processor the motion engine and the the clock speed on this thing is between 233 or 290 megahertz and to think that all the games that this thing ran like san andreas need for speed underground 2 it's quite amazing what's what's possible with with limited hardware but software capability the motherboard model number is gh 023 and we do sell these on our website at fasttechstore.com this in this one is a 2002 model so it's one of the last fat models you might have a different model number so before ordering from us make sure that you have your model number right because lots of times these are not interchangeable because the power supply used in these systems might be different or the disk drive might be different so you want to make sure that you get the right model number before you order from our website and again if you need these motherboards we sell them on our website links in the description box and the top comment it's important to handle this component with care because this is the main component of the system and if any of these components were broken or damaged this thing would not operate anymore thanks for watching another fast tech video before you leave make sure to subscribe to the channel and smash that like button that helps us out more than you know this is Shiroz from Fast Tech signing out and I'll see you in the next one.